It's time for Voices of the Region featuring area journalists and the stories they've been covering. Our guest this week is Danielle Kading with Wisconsin Public Radio. After an explosion five years ago, Wisconsin's only oil refinery is starting up in Superior after a $1.2 billion rebuild effort. Um, the explosion happened on April 26, 2018, and it's hard for most people who live here to forget that day um, after, you know, 17,000 barrels of oil spilled out of an asphalt tank um, due to the explosion when debris hit the tank and luckily um, a nearby tank holding a toxic chemical containing hydrochloric acid did not spill but it did prompt uh, an evacuation temporarily of about uh, 2,500 people in the city of 27,000 um, over fears of a potential release and so now after all this time uh, we are seeing the refinery begin to resume operations. They're beginning to start up um, and ramp up. They received, a, I believe, crude oil in March at the refinery. Um, and now they're looking forward to getting back to business. You know, the, the cost of this rebuild uh, tripled from initial projections. We, originally, we thought it was going to cost around $400 million. Now it's $1.2 billion at least. And it took years longer than expected because of the COVID-19 pandemic, which shut down work at the refinery uh, for a portion of time. Um, as the refinery is starting up, they're going to see more workers there on site. Um, I believe it's around 300, uh, 350 workers who will be there now uh, at the refinery compared to the 200 workers who were working there year round previously. Um, and that's because they have additional protocols and procedures uh, to ensure safety at the plant in the wake of the explosion. In northern Wisconsin, everybody knows that we've seen a rapid loss of snow and a lot of rain recently with the spring. Um, we were all enjoying the warmer temperatures, but unfortunately, uh, we've seen flooding as a result of that. And spring flooding has worsened riverbank erosion uh, near a Canadian firm's oil and gas pipeline on a northern Wisconsin tribes reservation. And that's heightened fears for some. Uh, that there may be an exposure of Enbridge's Line 5 pipeline. And the Bad River Band of Lake Superior Chippewa and Enbridge uh, filed a joint brief in federal court this week and informed the court that basically about 10 feet or up to 10 feet of riverbank has been lost in some spots uh, along the river, drawing it closer uh, to the pipeline. Um, right now, the shortest distance between the pipeline and the river is roughly 17 to 18 feet. And for some environmental groups and indigenous led groups like uh, the Sierra Club Wisconsin and Honor the Earth, they're very concerned about what that might mean for the potential of it becoming exposed and a, and a spill. The Enbridge has said that their pipeline continues to operate safely. Um, that they're monitoring the conditions at the site, which is called the Meander um, on the Bad River Reservation. But the Bad River Tribe contends that the pipeline poses an unreasonable risk to health and safety. And in 2019, they sued Enbridge to shut down and remove the pipeline from their reservation. Um, that lawsuit is still ongoing. So more than 4,000 people could receive access to treatment for opioid addiction through $8 million in grants that were awarded to the Wisconsin Department of Health Services as opioid-related deaths have climbed to record highs recently, unfortunately, here in Wisconsin. Uh, the Wisconsin Department of Health Services announced the grants last week, and this money comes from about $34 million that's been awarded to the state to address the opioid epidemic. And here in Wisconsin, um, the according to most recent data, which is 2021, there were 1,400 deaths or just about 1,400 opioid overdose deaths in Wisconsin. And that's been increasing year after year 
uh, here in the state. And so these grants are intended to support counties and tribes who receive that funding um, to help people access treatment. And that would include uh, medication assisted treatment like methadone, buprenorphine and naltrexone, if I'm saying that right. Um, and it all would also support behavioral therapy and other recovery supports for people who need it. Um, you know, here in the city of Superior, the Superior Police Department said they saw 69 overdoses last year, which increased by about 21 percent from 2021. Um, and that includes individuals who have died or overdoses that were reversed with uh, opioid reversal medication known as Narcan. 